E A G L E S. Say fly eagles fly. Fly eagles fly. Fly eagles fly. <laughs>overarching thoughts about what's what's transpired throughout this offseason because a lot has happened we're going to get into the little details but i need to know what's your overall feelings of what's been going on uh first of all shout out to my guy charles smith prime time i see you too shout out to my guy charles smith man you already know that's my brother right there um even though he switched sides on us for a little bit but he back he back y'all <laughs> he back he back um hey the truth bro I'm looking at everything that Jeffrey Lurie has thrown at, at John, Jonathan Gannon's way. Like, I understand the offensive side, right? I get right. it. I understand it. A lot of things is homegrown, and we're going to talk about the offense and how I think that Jalen Hurst has the best weapons a Eagles quarterback ever had in Eagles history. When you look at everything all around. And we're going to talk about that. But right now, I gotta look at Jonathan Gannon because he is the scariest part of this of this whole situation to me. You have now, I get it, I get it, I understand it. You didn't have the weapons last year to be aggressive, as you say, but I felt as though you still had the cornerback to be aggressive, and you didn't use him properly properly until week what nine. You know what I mean? I, I felt as though he kept putting him in the zone. He kept getting barbecue chicken. He went against DK Metcalf, um, uh, 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 um, Devontae Parker, was it? And it, it was like three um, wide receivers in a row, and he was getting cooked. But a lot of them wasn't on him. It was because of the play uh, scheme. So now you're in a situation to where as though you got dogs to get after the uh, after the quarterback. This is why I got to commend Howie and all of y'all. If y'all ain't seen my video yesterday, shout out to Philly 500. Me and him went at it about him apologizing to Howie. Because <laughs> we went at it. We went at it, bro. Like, 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 everybody doesn't need to agree, though. You know what I mean? So I I, I don't like a, a panel when everybody just, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh. Nah, if you state how you feel. And I disagree with 500, and I told him how I felt. You know what I mean? But that's my guy. You already know. I caught him, I caught him last night messing with him. But um, on another note, when you look at the situation, I feel as though how he understood the assignment. Remember that 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 um that saying that was going around in Philly, everybody. Oh, you understood the assignment. How he mm -hmm. understood the assignment, bro. We were second to last in pass rushing. Second to last. When has the Eagles? When has the Eagles team ever been like that? Never. In the last uh ten, 10 or twelve years, we have been top three. In the top three at getting after the quarterback in sex, mm -hmm. period. Yeah. Top 10 minimum. No, no, it's literally top three, bro. It's literally oh, word. Three. Yeah, they put out a stat. I can't uh, – somebody sent it to me. Shout out to who that was, man. A lot of people send me stuff. And i seen a couple people make videos about it after I got it. I never made a video about it. But I'm like, damn, really? Um, I think the only people that was above us was – um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, chat. Y'all know how y'all do. Y'all y'all got it. Um. I think it was either Baltimore or it was the Rams, or we was right up right before the Rams, uh, uh, right above the Rams. But anyway, um, he understood the assignment. He went and did nothing to get you pass rushers. He went and did nothing to get you people to go after the quarterback. He went and did nothing to make sure that we don't be second to last this year. And if we do, it's on you. And we, and it better not happen because I got a quick eye on you, and I'm not saying. Week three, fire him. Week four, fire him. A lot like 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 a couple people has been saying. But I'm saying, you might got to have to take a step back, brother, if you can't get this job done. Because when you look at everything, every level is cool. Now, this the I ain't going to say softest, but the, 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 the one level that you can have question marks on because you really don't have a guy there is safety. I, and I can live with that. And I can live with that right now. Too, because you got two good corners. You got Three. two good corners. Yeah, great. Great. You got two great corners, number one, right? 
Number number two, you got dudes just rushing off the edge. So you so you should make it two ways though. A, a quarterback can't even see that far to your third level. You know what I mean? They should be they should be hidden. You know how they hide Steph Curry in defense and all that stuff. Our safeties really should be hidden. Even though I like what what uh, Marcus Epps brings to the table, I got to see some more from Kayvon Wallace. Um, and 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 the list kind of goes on and on. Um, but. You should be able to hide that group with these pass rushers you got, bro. No, I I can't really agree with you more, like because you know Harry Roseman, he he been getting a lot of hell. Let's just call it what it is. He he's 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 got hell regularly from us, and I think it's more so we just hold him accountable. And when you think about the way he approached this offseason, he approached it like his life was on the line. If you ask me, he got the three year extension, and he made he, he made he made it worth his weight in gold. Like you think about the way he. Like you said, brought in pass rushers, but the way he loaded up on one of our weakest group position groups and that's linebacker really astounds me. Like the way he went out and got a guy like Hassan Reddick, a double digit sack guy, back to back seasons in two different situations, and on top of that, he he multiple. Then you go and then you go and steal Nicole Dean in the third round. How the hell you make that happen, right? Then you go and get the young boy out of Kansas, uh, Karan Johnson, who I like. Didn't get invited to the combine, but my man ran a 4-4 on his pro day. My right. man is an athletic freak. He may not be the most refined linebacker, but he made most of his production in college being a pass rusher. So with, with how he did, he went and got a bunch of guys who were versatile, guys that got speed, athleticism, guys that can get to the quarterback at the end of the day. And you gotta, you, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta give kudos to that. You, you went and got Kaiser White, a, a linebacker who was a tackling machine, but also a guy who who's, who's a former safety, so he knows how to drive back in coverage. You know, the, the the one thing that stands out amongst all the moves he's made is versatility. Guys that can just do more than one thing. Guys you can put in various situations and they can win. We got so much talent on that front, man. Like like you said, we we need to get back to form when it comes to rushing that quarterback, and the best way to do that is by putting talent right out there. And I know a lot of people like to say even about Jordan Davis, right? Hey, Jordan Davis, he didn't he didn't rush the quarterback enough in college, but that wasn't what he was asked to do. He was he he was he was in this he was in a Georgia defense that was so loaded with talent, so much talent that guys left there to go to other schools just so they can get some time. But they right. were so they were so deep, and they was blowing guys out so much they didn't have to keep them on the field that long. So it's like his best years is in front of him. He got less miles on his body than your average D tackle probably because he was on such a talented team, because he was so talented, and they they was constantly rotating him. And that's, and that's exactly what's going to happen in Philly. The D yeah. line is going to get rotated. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, that's, and, and, and that's when we're at our best. You can make an argument that from a depth perspective, we may have the best defensive line group in the NFC East. I know the Washington football team got Chase Young, they got Montez Sweat and Jonathan Allen. They top heavy though. Right. That's they. That's they three had a monster. They top heavy, but after after those three guys, who do they really have? Yeah, but even last year, they, it wasn't like they was getting the job done. They wasn't exactly. getting the job done last year. Like, exactly. like, I mean, they had more sacks than us, but they they wasn't they wasn't that good, especially after like you said, they top heavy. So once, um, granted, Chase Young was injured. He he, he missed the whole season with the ACL. Yeah, and sure, I th- sure. and I and I and I think Montez Montez Sweat well, he didn't play every game either. But I got hurt too. Um, the first round pick. Uh, damn. Uh, you talking about? Uh, you talking about Jonathan Allen? No, the, um, Chase, Chase they, Young. Yeah, Chase Young. Chase Young. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said him. Yeah, the ACL right. He tore the ACL. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, like you know, this team is really poised. To really make a not make a lot of noise now. It's all on paper, right? We got to put it together. But like you said, it's so much pressure on Jonathan Gannon to get this thing right. And if I'm being honest, I'm more nervous about him than I am about Jalen Hurts. If I'm if, if I'm just keeping it a, keeping it a, keeping it a buck I, with you, I, I, I am because here's the thing: we know that Jalen Hurts is going to give it all that he got. And if push comes to shove, we know if. The, if, and this is not something that I want to see happen, but we know Jalen Hurts got a backup point. If my arm ain't working, I can use my legs. I don't know if Jonathan Gannon has a backup point. If what you we have seen multiple times him coming to a game, and this is what I'm gonna do. If they if if if, if they do something different, I'm not gonna do anything different. I'm just gonna keep. 
keep having tunnel vision, keep doing what I see and then what I said I was going to do and not have a backup plan. It's been so many times he has been punched in the mouth and he doesn't know how to counter. And that is the scariest thing for a coach to not make adjustments. It's like Doc Rivers all over again. Like, come on now. Like, you have to make it. Like, you got to understand. People get paid too. You're not the only one getting paid. You're not the only one looking at tape. You're not the only one with good players at an NFL level. You're not the only one that's probably on a hot seat. So people are coming out and they're trying to make sure you don't succeed. And instead, now it's only one year, right? But I'm telling you from what I have seen. And instead, you come out every single game and it's like, no adjustments. Where are the adjustments? Now, if everything is working fine and from the beginning, then we all good. Look at the Denver game. Everything was working fine. We was good. Look at the Lions game. Everything was working fine. We all good. But then you look at the Giants game, what we shouldn't have lost. Everything wasn't working fine, and you made no adjustments. He made no adjustments. You didn't send more pressure. You kept your guys eight yards back, talking cornerbacks, eight yards back, and just letting anybody pitch and catch. I mean, dude, you had five quarterbacks with 80% or better on us. That is a that, that's embarrassing. Bro, nine quarterbacks. 80%. Bro, nine, nine quarterbacks completing over 73%. Five of those nine completing over 80%. And then you allow Derek Carr, the only quarterback, to go not, over 90% on you. Come on, my man. man. My man had the best game of his career statistically. He had the best game of his life. He had the best life. game of like, any, any of the Carl's life. You hear me? Any of the like, Carl's. And that can't happen, especially with this level of talent. That's why I'm looking at him like I need I, like I want to ask you your thoughts about the James Bradbury signing. James Bradbury was somebody that, we, that we've been campaigning for all offseason. And I need to know when we signed him, what were your initial thoughts? And then after you give your initial thoughts, what do you see his impact being on the field? The league in trouble. That was my initial thoughts. If, if, if Gannon puts it right, the league is in trouble. Because, first of all, we got to understand, we play – you want to put Dak up there as elite? I wouldn't. But if you want to put him up there, okay. We play two elite quarterbacks then. I'm not putting – I'm not putting – um. Uh, the little fifth grader up there, uh, Dan, I can't remember his name right now, uh, from the Cardinals. What are you talking about? Uh, Yoda. I'm not putting him up there. But you do play Aaron Rodgers. And that's really the only elite quarterback that I see on the whole on, on, on the whole schedule. Let's right. talk it's about like, it. It's Aaron Rodgers, and then it's a big drop-off. And then you can it's debate. So okay. much, I mean, the best, the next best quarterback is Dak Prescott. Right, you could you could probably debate, and then Dak, the next Kirk one is Cousins, who? Kyler, Jared like, like you could, you could really debate and like in that and at the at the Aaron Rodgers, you like it's it's really like any given Sunday with anybody else. 